Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing my science fiction and fantasy list of books that I want to read in 2021. <laughs> Before we get into the books, I just want to thank Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Book of the Month is a monthly book service that promotes new and emerging authors. Every month, they curate diverse new and early releases in genres like thriller, mystery, contemporary, fantasy, and more. While the subscription is monthly, you can skip months if you do not find any titles that interest you during any given month. The first February pick that we have is The Kindest Lie. This sweeping story traces a woman's return to her struggling hometown and the hope she finds in confronting her past. Powerful and revealing, The Kindest Lie captures the heartbreaking divide between black and white communities and offers both an unflinching view of motherhood in contemporary America and the never-ending quest to achieve the American dream. Next, we have Infinite Country. Lyrical and poignant, this multi-generational story follows the lives of one Colombian family separated by borders. Infinite Country is a story of two countries and one mixed status family for whom every triumph is stitched with regret and every dream pursued bears the weight of a dream deferred. From the Texas Plains to the California coast, this Depression-era tale follows a family striving for a better life. The Four Winds is a portrait of America and the American dream as seen through the eyes of one woman whose courage and sacrifice will define a generation. Next we have Girl A. This haunting exploration of trauma and survival is a gripping portrait of family, violence, and memory. For readers of Room and Sharp Objects, this psychologically immersive novel is about a young girl who escapes captivity, but not the secrets that shadow the rest of her life. Lastly, we have Honey Girl. When a classic Virgo spontaneously gets married, she starts re-examining her life and what she truly wants. When reality comes crashing in, our main character Grace must face what she's been running from all along. Those are all five picks for February. If you're interested in any of them, make sure to use the code FEBREADS to get your first book for $9.99. Also, I'll have a link in my bio for you to use to head right into the Book of the Month website. Usually, I don't make year-long lists for books that I want to read throughout the year, and usually they are not fantasy or science fiction related. However, I recently finished reading Gideon the Ninth, and that really inspired me to get into the science fiction genre. And in addition to that, I feel like I read a lot more fantasies last year than I actually thought. So I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to make a list for 2021. It's going to be a small list. It's going to be a doable list. And I think I'm going to actually read the books on that list. For these, I will be sharing with you guys what I've heard about the books, what the books are about, things like that. I don't really know too much about all of them, but they are either books that were recommended to me or books that I've seen so many people mention or books that I just generally really love the covers and I was like, why not? The first book on my list is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. This book follows Kira, a space explorer who goes to different planets and when she goes on a mission to an uncolonized planet, Kira finds an alien relic beneath the surface of the world and the outcome transforms her forever and changes the entire course of human history. I recently watched a video from NASA where they were sharing what different planets look like and I was like, first of all, I want to be an astronaut. Second of all, I can't be an astronaut. But I can do the third thing, which is becoming a reader of science fiction, which involves outer space, so I can be a literary astronaut. I am ready to read it. The next book on here is These Violent Delights, which is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920s Shanghai, where we follow Roma and Juliet, who are trying to get rid of a horrible monster that is infiltrating their city. I am excited about this because this book, from what I've heard a lot of people mention, is a friends to enemies to lovers trope type of situation and I feel like I haven't seen that many books with this trope. I really really love this trope. Like I love seeing characters who are friends start hating each other and then they start loving each other. I'm like I love it here. I've also really heard amazing things about the cast of characters in this book and that's the biggest reason why I just wanted to read it because I just feel like books with amazing characters, even if a book has amazing characters and a horrible plot, I will still like it more than if it had an amazing plot where the characters were just just like absolutely horrendous. The only genres where I am like 
A-OK -okay with horrendous characters are mysteries, thrillers, and horrors. But otherwise, I'm like, I want to like you. I want to root for you. So I'm really excited about these Violent Delights. I've heard only good things. The fan art is beautiful. The cover is gorgeous. I love covers so much. Like if I see a wonderful cover, I almost don't even care what the book is about. I will immediately pick it up and start reading. I'll be like, I haven't read the summary. I don't know who wrote this. I don't know anything about it, but the cover is gorgeous, so let me read it. That has ended up horribly for me in the past, but I know with these Violent Delights, it's gonna be a good time. I'm hoping. Let me not jinx it. It's gonna be a good time. Anyways, the next book on my list is The Martian. Six days ago, an astronaut named Mark became one of the first people to walk on Mars. Now he's sure he'll be the first person to die there. <laughs> After a dust storm nearly kills him and forces his crew to evacuate while thinking he's dead, Mark finds himself stranded and completely alone with no way to even signal Earth that he's alive. And even if he could get word out, his supplies would be gone long before a rescue team arrives. I really want to watch the movie for this. Usually I watch movies first and then read the book, which I feel like not many people do, but you should. Especially with something like science fiction or fantasy, I'm 100% not against watching something first because a lot of times that will help you understand the themes of the story, what's going on, and that's really relevant for one of the books on this list. But anyways, back to The Martian. Very excited to read this, very excited to watch a movie. I've heard amazing things. This is definitely going to be one of those planet style books that will give me the NASA vibe that I wanted so I just can't wait to read it. Next on this list is one that I am not intimidated by because I just feel like it's going to be one that I will really really love. Like if I don't love this book I'm gonna be really surprised and the book that I'm talking about is Legend Born. After her mother dies in an accident 16 year old Bree doesn't want anything to do with her family or memories of home. So she goes into a residential program for bright teens at UNC Chapel Hill in North Carolina where she expects to have this perfect escape but that's until she witnesses a magical attack on her first night on campus. So from what I've heard about this it's a loose King Arthur retelling. I have heard it's an amazing story, the writing is awesome, the characters are great, there's a lot of magical dark themes in it so I'm excited to read this. We are essentially following Brie as she makes an effort to take down a secret evil society. I've heard amazing reviews from Alana from The Awkward Book Nerd. This is like one of her favorite books ever and she has been convincing me for months to read it and I'm finally going to read it this year. I cannot wait to get into this book. I just know it's gonna be a good one. I don't know if it qualifies as dark academia because it's like a dark theme thing and it takes place on a college campus but I don't know. I'm just excited to read it. The next one is one that I am kind of scared to read because I've tried reading it before and I put it down for a while and I was like I'm gonna come back to it and I didn't come back to it and the book that I'm talking about is A Red Rising. Red Rising follows Darrow who is a red, a member of the lowest caste in the color-coded society of the future. Like his fellow reds, he works all day believing that he and his people are making the surface of Mars livable for future generations. Although he spends his life willingly, knowing that his blood and sweat will one day result in a better world for his children, he and his kind have already been betrayed. It's a revenge themed science fiction and someone literally described it in the review as the longest, most brutal and complicated game of capture the flag ever played. I feel like that line alone got me. I've just seen people crying about this book, screaming about this book, loving this book. I have literally not seen a single person hate it and I'm like this is a good sign for me. This is a good sign for me. I'm scared but this is a good sign for me. The next book on this list is another one that I'm super intimidated by but I've heard amazing things about and that is Black Sun. This book is inspired by civilizations of pre-Columbian Americas and woven into a tale of celestial prophecies political intrigue, and forbidden magic. In the holy city of Tova, the winter solstice is usually a time for celebration and renewal, but this year it coincides with a solar eclipse, a rare celestial event prescribed by the sun priest as an unbalancing of the world. This book is going to be a wild ride, I can already tell, because there's like a journey in the book, there's a lot that's gonna happen. I think they are on a ship. Like I'm getting really into adventure stories and I 
never thought I would be into such a thing because in the past adventure stories have never really been for me but now I'm like you know what that kind of slaps so I kind of want to read that. Next on this list is actually a series. The Witcher is a series of fantasy novels and short stories centered around a witcher named Geralt. Witchers are essentially beast hunters who develop supernatural abilities at a young age and they battle wild beasts and monsters. I originally got into this because I binge watched the Witcher TV show on Netflix. People call you a monster too. Why not kill them? Because then I am what they say I am. All of our choices draw our destinies close. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, I need to know more. Where did this come from? And I looked it up and I was like, oh my gosh, this is based on a game, but I don't play video games. Like, so I'm never going to have any more of the winter. And then I realized that it was based off of a game that was based off of a book series. And I was like, wait a minute, you might be onto something. And then I like tried to read it and I was like, wait because I had tried to listen to the audiobook. Usually audiobooks work best for me for many reasons and I was like okay let me listen to the audiobook and physically read it at the same time and then my library hold was like bye and then I was like I want to actually be able to like write notes on a post-it and put them in here but now that I own a copy of The Last Wish, Sword of Destiny, and Blood of Elves I know that I will be at least reading those three and I'll have some more Witcher content. The parts of The Last Wish that I had read I really 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 enjoyed and I really felt engrossed in the story and earlier when I was talking about reading something before watching the movie versus watching the movie or adaptation before reading I was talking about The Witcher because I feel like one thing that really really helped me with understanding what was going on in The Last Wish was the fact that I had already watched the TV show so I kind of had an understanding of the concept of a witcher an understanding of the monsters and things that the witcher was you know fighting and rounding up and things like that I felt like I knew the story but there was so much more in the book as one can imagine so I was like I know what's going on here these things feel familiar but at the same time there's so many things going on that I didn't see in the TV show so it was like an added bonus so I will say don't discount watching adaptations before reading the book. It definitely helped me with The Witcher and I cannot wait to read the first three books in the series. It's a really long one so I highly doubt I'll finish it this year but I know I will at least attempt to read the first three and I just can't wait for that because I feel like it's going to be a good time. If you haven't watched The Witcher on Netflix you definitely need to because it is a phenomenal series. Next on this list is probably the most like the most intimidating book on this list and that is The Rage of Dragons. The Rage of Dragons is the first book in the Burning series. The Omehi people have been fighting an unwinnable fight for almost 200 years. Their society has been built around war and only war. The lucky ones are born gifted. One in every 2,000 women has the power to call down dragons. One in every 100 men is able to magically transform himself into a bigger, stronger, faster, killing machine. This book has revenge, it has war, it has adventure, it has tension. These are all things that I love in various different genres. I've heard from all the people who have read it that it's really easy to get into, it's really easy to read, the writing is very simple to understand, and the story is very very captivating. So even if you are somebody who doesn't read adult fantasy, this book is going to be really easy to get into. I have had it recommended to me so many times that it is time. It's time to read it. The next book on this list is Ray Bearer. Nothing is more important than loyalty, but what if you've sworn to protect the one you were born to destroy? This book follows a main character who has always longed for warmth and a family. She was raised in isolation by a mysterious, often absent mother known only as the Lady. The Lady sends her to the capital of the global empire to compete with other children to be chosen to be one of the Crown Prince's Council of Eleven. If she's picked, she'll be joined with other council members through the Ray, a bond deeper than blood. Although the closeness of this bond is irresistible to her, a magical wish forces her to kill the crown prince after gaining his trust. But soon she has to decide between creating a different path for herself or fulfilling the wishes command. I had actually planned to read this book last year but then I went into a massive I feel like fantasy reading slump. I feel like I either wasn't really enjoying the fantasies I was reading or I wasn't reading any and so I was like I want to read this book when I'm in the mood to read fantasies. I am looking forward to reading this book a lot because I've heard great things and I know the cover, the US cover, kind of gets a little bit of a... 
Like I love all the different colors. I love the energy. I'm ready for it. The last and final book on here might be kind of surprising to a few people because if you don't know, I had read A Court of Thorns and Roses in 2019 and I really, really loved it. I think I gave it five stars. And then I read A Court of Mist and Fury in 2020, I think early 2020. Hated that. Absolutely hated that. So then I was like, okay, now I can't continue with this series because the things that happened in A Court of Mist and Fury were just too upsetting to me to continue with the rest of the series. Like because of the situation, I was like, I cannot continue with this. Like I'm going to be so bitter the entire time. And I was kind of like, okay, am I going to read a book by this author ever again? Because I feel this way about A Court of Thorns and Roses. And then I have no interest in Throne of Glass. What's it going to be? And it was House of Earth and Blood. This book has been recommended to me by so many of this author's fans. Every time they hear that I didn't like A Court of Thorns and Roses, they're immediately like, try Crescent City, try Crescent City, try Crescent City. You'll love it. It's great. It has a murder mystery. It has this, it has that. And I'm finally going to read it. This book follows our main character, Bryce, who works hard and parties hard until a demon murders her closest friends, leaving her wounded and alone. When the accused is behind bars with the crime start up again, Bryce finds herself at the heart of the investigation and she'll do whatever it takes to avenge their deaths. I'm just realizing that there are so many books on this list that are revenge focused and I don't know if that's about to be my new 2021 trope but I'm here for it. Like I said earlier I've been recommended this book by so many people because it has mystery elements, it has fantasy elements and generally I feel like even from reading this description and what I know about the book I do think this will be one that I enjoy. It's a really thick book but I'm looking forward to reading it. I think it's like 800 pages or something but I'm really 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 looking forward to reading it and I cannot wait. But yes that was the final book on my 2021 fantasy and science fiction TBR if you will. I am very pumped to read all of these books. I feel like I genuinely will enjoy all of them. At the very least they'll just be like good books but we'll see how it goes at the end of the year if I have read them, how the experience was and things like that. If you've watched all of this video go ahead and leave me a dragon emoji in the comments or just write dragon and yeah thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you all in the next one. Bye! Thank you.